In this video, I'm going to show you how to host a DAISY server on your local PC for free. Now you might want to do this if you want to play single player DAISY, or you want to host a server for your friends to play on, or you want to explore a map in new ways that you've never seen before, and so on. I have a full guide for this on my website at thisisloot.com slash DAISY server, so you can follow along there as well. I'll post a link in the description. The first thing we need to do is go to Steam and we need to download DAISY server. So you want to go up here to the upper left and where this drop down says games, you want to click on tools. And so you'll have games and tools. Now mine is right here because I've used it recently, but you will probably just see a long list of all of the tools associated to all of the games you have in your library on Steam. So you're probably just going to want to search for daisy server and that will show it here so you'll click on daisy server and this will say install for you mine says launch because i've already have it installed so click on install and pause the video until that finishes the install is about 3.64 gigs last time i checked so make sure you have that space on your hard drive Okay, now that that is installed, we need to make a few changes to the files. So you have to find where this is installed on your drive. And the easiest way to do that is to right click on Daisy server, go to manage, and then browse local files. And that will open the folder where it has installed. Now the default is just C drive, program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Daisy server, and that's it. So you shouldn't really have a reason to move that that I can think of. So the default installation should work just fine. Now the first thing we need to do is edit this server DZ CFG file. This is a server configuration file and this is just the default that was created by um, Bohemia that they include with the package. So I have it already up in my text editor. We are going to edit just a couple of settings here. Now these aren't all of the parameters you can have in the configuration file on Bohemia's website uh, on the wiki they have uh, it covers everything. So these are the main ones and these are what is included in this CFG file. These are additional parameters that you can have. I'm not going to go over all of these. We're just going to edit a few to get us up and running. So the first thing is this name. We want to put in our own server name here. So we're going to call this, this is Lutz YouTube how to server and we are going to run the Sakal map. So we'll say Sakal. This can be whatever you want, but it is going to be what shows up in the launcher when you run day Z. So make that what you want it to be. The next thing that we're going to do, we're gonna leave all the rest of this as default, is down here with the missions. As of the recording of this video, Bohemia has not added Sakal as an option. I don't know if they ever will. So we're gonna add it ourselves. So what we need to do is on my GitHub, I have a file uh, that has this, this is the whole configuration file and I have added Sakal in there. So you can just copy and paste either this whole file or just this line right here. And we are gonna add this at the bottom. Now this is just a comment, so it doesn't actually do anything, but I like to have it here just so it's readily available. And what we are going to do is copy that and we are going to replace this template. By default, the server runs Chinaris. You can see this is Chinaris Plus. That is the default mission. The second one is Livonia, and then we've added Sakal. So what we are going to do is paste this here. So our template is daisyoffline.sakal. You don't actually need this line, that's just a comment, but this is what you wanna change if you wanna run Sakal. So we have changed the server name and changed the mission. Now we are going to save that CFG file. So we are done there. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a batch file that will start our server. So we are going to create a new text document. We're going to call this server start.bat. So we are changing the extension and the computer is going to say, are you sure you want to do that? We will say yes. You can name this whatever you want. The name is irrelevant as long as you can remember that that's the file you need to do uh, to run to start your server. Now don't double click on this. Nothing's going to happen because there is nothing in the file. It's just an empty batch file. And if you click open, same thing. What you need to do is open it in your text editor. So here we have server start.bat, this batch file in our text editor, it is currently empty. So we're gonna go back to my GitHub and we are going to look at the batch file sample that I have here. We're gonna copy and paste all of this. 
the link to the GitHub will be in the description of this video. So we're gonna copy and paste all of this and put it in our batch file. I'm going to go over this line by line and just so we understand exactly what's happening here quickly. So the first thing we need to do is edit our server name. This does not have to match the server name that we had before. So we're just gonna say, this is loots. So call one, we will say, okay. This is the directory where the server executable is and where all the server files are. Like it says, this is the default. This should work unless you move things around. This is setting the port number. The default is 2302, which should also work unless you have something funky going on or you're running multiple servers or something strange. This is the server CFG file that we just created before. So this is the, ser the file right here. So these names have to match, right? We basically have to tell the server where to find its configuration file. Like we said, this name is irrelevant. This is just the default name. So if you have different servers, you will have different names. So we just need to make sure that that is accurate. Next, the server, the first time it runs is going to create a folder where it saves different profiles and other data. So we are going to call that folder profile. That is the default. So we're just gonna leave that default here. We will tell it how many CPUs to use. I'm gonna leave this as the default, which is two. You can modify that based on your PC configuration. The next is the list of mods. We're not going to use any mods for this example. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but when it comes time to adding mods to your server, you're going to do that on this line here. Don't worry about these four lines. This is just uh, scripting stuff. Now I'm gonna explain what this is doing. This is going to create the server profile folder if it doesn't already exist. And if it does exist, it's not going to do anything. This is just going to tell us the time that the server started. And this is where that server name up here variable is used. So it doesn't have to match anything just so we know what's going on. Now, this is the actual file that is going to launch the Daisy, sorry, the actual lines that are going to launch the actual Daisy server executable. Now, the Bohemia website has a list of all of the launch parameters that you can have. I'm not gonna go over every single one, I'm just gonna go over the ones that we have here. So this is telling us where the configuration file is. This is the variable we set right here. This line is telling it which port to use. That is the variable we set here. This is the profiles folder. So that's what we set on this line. This is BattleEye. So it's telling you're telling it where BattleEye is installed when you first uh, install Daisy server, it installs BattleEye here in this folder. So you can see it's just all lowercase BattleEye. So we're telling it it is in that folder. This is the mod list variable, which we would set here if we had any mods. So it's just currently empty. This is the CPU count variable. So we have two CPUs here. This is do logs. So this is telling it that we do want to have server logs. This is telling it to do the admin log. We do want that. This is the network log. So we're telling it we want to see the network logs as well. And this is freeze check. So what this does is it checks the server to see if it's been frozen for more than five minutes. And if it has, it crashes it and makes a dump report that we can read. Now the end of this file is handling automatic server restarts. This is kind of a crude way to do it, but it works fine for a local server uh, in most cases. And this is setting every four hours it's going to default. So this is going to time out after four hours kill the daisy server executable we're going to wait 10 seconds for that to die and then we're going to go back to the start and we are going to start the server all over again now one word of warning you've been in a community server where it restarts and you get a countdown that says the server will start in 60 minutes the server will restart in five minutes right and so you know what's coming we aren't going to cover messaging in this video so you are not going to see a message in your local server when the restart is coming so you uh, can keep an eye on the timer in the command window which i'll show you in a second or you can set up messaging but i'm not going to cover that in this video so that is the batch file we're going to save that now back in the server folder you can see here's the configuration file that we edited and now it is showing our batch file as well we are now surprisingly ready to start our server so we're going to double click on this file we get two windows the first is a command window, and this is where it says the time and the server name has started. It is already in the countdown to do the server restart, so in 14,000 seconds, it's going to restart. It also pops up this day Z window, which is showing us the server progress as it's starting up. And it will show you also when you're playing 
uh, when you connect and when your friends connect and so forth. So you wait until this gets into, uh, finishes all of this stuff, and then we will be ready to connect. So initial sequence finished, so we are ready. So we now go to Steam. We find day Z, so we want to close this, go to day Z, and we are going to play. And we go to the LAN tab up here, and as you can see, our server is live and ready to join. There's no one playing it, as you might imagine. It is running the Sakal map. This is the name that we created in the configuration file. This is Loot's YouTube how-to server Sakal. So we are now ready. We click join. There are no mods that are required by the server, as you might imagine, because that variable was empty when we started the server and we are going to join. Now we're loading in here. You can see in the server window, Battle Eye has started, etc. My player, this is loot, has connected and it's coming in. And here we are. We are in Sakal on a server hosted on my local machine. Now this is persistent, so I can loot and traverse the map, and etc. And when I log out and log back in, all of my things will save. You just have to make sure that you are running your server. So you need the server start batch file. You need to run that. Otherwise you won't see your server in the LAN tab in the launcher. Your friends can join this. They need to be connected to your network. So if you have roommates or family that live in your house, most likely they are on the same LAN and they can connect without issue. Your friends that are not living in your house, uh, slightly more complicated. You have to port forward on your router, which I'm not going to cover here, so that they can connect to your router. So they have to be able to connect from the WAN to your LAN. Uh, so you're going to have to forward some ports there. So keep that in mind. So there's zombies, there's default loot. All of that is on this server. And like I said, it's persistent. So you can store uh, all of your progress as you are going. Like I said, this is a very rudimentary way to get a server running. You want to look into doing mods, maybe some server management and so on. But you are running now Sakal on your own server. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions along the way, just leave a comment on this video and I will help the best I can. Good luck.